the future of Bon Marche with Kate Hardcastle. Kate's a retail analyst and founder of Inside with Passion. She joins me from Leeds. Uh, Kate, evening to you. Thanks very much for being with us uh, once again. I mean, just picking up on what Nina was saying there about the, the market for women over the 50s, you would have thought there was a lot of potential there, given the problems that Marks & Spencer has had with its clothing offer. Why has Bon Marche struggled? You're absolutely right to point that out. In fact, in research last year, over 70% of female over 50 shoppers said they were dissatisfied with the fashion offer available to them here in the UK. And that's why brands uh, which range as wide as Primark on the value, including some supermarkets, own brand ranges like the two range at Sainsbury's and Zara have taken this market share from specialist re re uh, retailers like Bon Marche, who should absolutely be lapping up this opportunity to serve a customer over 50, who perhaps isn't as price sensitive as some of the younger shoppers. Yeah, and I mean, is it, is it um, from your experience in the industry that these that they're just not responding to trends quick enough, or is it that they don't have almost perversely the opposite, a, a kind of a long-term view of the of shaping the sort of market that will then want to buy their products? Most of the retailers we see it in what's becoming the worst year for store closures in over five years now. It's very much down to the fact they have too much to do in too little amount of time with too little cash. So even though Bon Marche have been investing on their online and their technology sites, looking at operations, you've got to have a brand that's desirable to start with. Your products have got to be engaging. And we have a customer now who has so much information and so much inspiration at her fingertips that she wants to be enjoying the retail experience and getting the products that she sees out there on her favorite celebrity or using social media. It shouldn't be an experience where it's a traditional 9 to 5.30 retail environment and they don't feel very inspired by what's in there. And unfortunately, Bon Marche certainly fits within that category. It doesn't mean it can't be turned around, but it needs a lot more investment and a lot more savvy thinking when it comes to today's very demanding consumer. Yeah, Bon Marche is obviously a local employer in Leeds, so there must be some concern in the city about what this could mean. Um, I mean, would people be reassured, though, that it's Philip Day who's, who's putting his money in, given, given his reputation at Edinburgh Woolenburg? The head office is just down the road in Wakefield and of course, like any head office, it has an economical effect, a ripple effect in terms of where the siting is for the local businesses that supply the people that work there. And of course, every single person within the Bon Marche group will be extremely concerned. So to have a knight in shining armour like Philip Day is certainly a better outcome than some of the other brands that we've been discussing this year so far who have no future ahead of them. That said, obviously, to make it worthwhile, we have an astute retail businessman who's been quietly taking over brands like Yeager, like Peacocks, and building futures for them. He's even looking into department stores where he might include several of these brands together, packaged as a unit. I think he knows this buyer quite well, and he'll know just how hard he's going to have to work. And that's why he's placed the offer that he has, I believe, because he knows just how much investment is going to be required. But certainly, compared to some of the brands we've discussed that have no future, it's certainly good to know that someone believes in the brand still. Indeed, Kate Hardcastle of Inside with Passion. Thanks very much for joining us this evening from Leeds.